So, my husband felt led by God in February this year to start a YouTube channel. There was a lot of considerations and he had to wrestle through a lot of practical implications, especially the financial investment of video equipment and the time investment as he had to do all the video editing himself and he takes hours and hours, you'll be surprised. However, he dared to respond to the sense of urgency in his heart and he pushed through with his decision. And little did he know that church services would look very different two months later and that God would powerfully use both the equipment that he invested in as well as the video editing skills that he trained himself in. Because now he can continue to equip the saints for the work of the ministry and provide a weekly word in season for our congregation and even the wider body of Christ. It is really beautiful. So I want to ask you, have you ever evaluated your emotions and thoughts when it comes to responding in obedience to God? My husband responds much quicker than I do. I usually think through all the detail and the implications and I count the cost. And it takes a while for me to commit. But when I'm in, I'm in. So there have been so many times in my life when being obedient to God and His voice was a scary place, a place out of my comfort zone, a place of tears and fears and many discussions with God, and a place where I had to put my trust in the Lord because I felt completely out of control. So I want to ask you another question. You know, what is God calling you to do in and after this season of lockdown? Maybe He's calling you to reprioritize things in your life. Maybe He is calling you to forgive from the heart daily or to ask forgiveness daily. Maybe He's calling you to give generously or to trust in Him, to stop procrastinating, to finish something that you started or to start a thing that you've been putting off for so long. Or maybe He simply wants you to respond when He speaks. To respond in childlike trust. So today I want to speak to you about day to respond. Do we have the courage to respond when God speaks? So I want to take you to a portion of scripture in 1 Kings 17, which is a beautiful example of God's response when we respond in obedience. So the background story of, of this portion of scripture is there was a drought in Israel for three and a half years. And during this time, God told his servant Elijah to go to a certain city because he commanded a widow there to provide for him. So Elijah went to the city and he met a woman at the gates. And after he asked her for a morsel of bread, she answered him as follows. So we pick up the story in 1 Kings 17 verse 12. So she said, this is the widow, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin, and a little oil in a jar. And see, I'm gathering a couple of sticks, that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it, and die. Maybe this is how many people feel currently in, in the nation and all over the world. But Elijah said to her, do not fear. And I want you to note this, these three words, do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry, until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. In the next few verses, the widow's son became sick and he died. But Elijah cried out to the Lord and he raised him from the dead. 
What a glorious outcome from one moment of overcoming fear and responding to the word of the Lord. Elijah had to tell her, do not fear. And her fear was, what if I do not have enough for myself? But God's response to obedience was his supernatural provision during a season of drought and the resurrection of her son. So what if she did not respond? What if she did not overcome her fear? What if she did not respond in obedience? What if she held on to what she had in fear of not having enough and missed out on two beautiful miracles from God's hands? We can only respond in obedience to God when we dare to overcome fear. We can only respond in obedience to God when we dare to overcome fear. So I want to share with you a few times in my life when I had to overcome fear in order to respond in obedience to God's voice. And I discovered that every time I respond in obedience, God responds to me as well. So in 2002, I dared to respond to God and I gave away 15,000 rand that I saved for three years for a laser eye operation, cried for many days, wrestling through this commitment as I was not only going to give a lot of money, I was giving away my dream. And I feared that I would never be able to do this operation. But God's response to my step of obedience was enabling me to do the laser eye operation a few years later and a blessing on our personal finances even to this day. I'm so thankful that I dared to respond to God in 2002. In 2008, I dared to respond to God and I followed my husband to East London when I was eight months pregnant, a town in or a city in South Africa I've never known before, I've never visited before, and I was scared to resign my job, to leave my support structure behind and to move to a new city. But God's response to my step of obedience was a beautiful community of friends in East London. We love East London. God has given us so much and the opportunity to join Andre in full-time ministry. At the end of 2009, a dream for us that came true. In 2016, I dared to respond and I prayed for someone with years of back pain while struggling with back pain myself. And I was so scared that nothing was going to happen. I wanted to ask other people to join me, but in the end, I had to do this on my own because nobody else was available. And God's response to my step of obedience, a number of messages over the last five years from this woman to tell me that her back is still healed, that she's still without pain, and that she loves her visits to her grandchildren now because she can pick them up with no pain. Previously, it was so difficult, those visits, and now I get these messages from her, which is such a joy. In 2017, I dared to respond to God's voice, and I volunteered to be the class representative for my son's class when he was in grade three, something that not many people is willing to do. And I was so worried that this commitment would take too much of my time, or that school responsibilities would interfere with church responsibilities. But God's response to my step of obedience is a trust relationship with many of the parents in Vian's class to this day. A love for them, a compassion in my heart, which led to invitations to church and invitations to youth and conversations with them about God. I'm so thankful that by God's grace, I could respond. In 2018, I dared to respond to God and I printed 1,500 copies of my first book, Free to Be. I was so scared that I would not get the money back or that it would take a very long time to sell. I didn't know who was going to read the book. But God's response, again, to my step of obedience was a continuous flow of testimonies from women on how this book has impacted their lives and even printing another 1,500 books nine months later. God is faithful when we dare to respond. In 2019, I dared to respond to something on our 21 day generosity challenge during our church's Love the City Month. I dared to respond to this. Bless the most challenging person in your life. 
and I was planning to skip that one on the list even though I compiled the list myself because I was afraid to feel vulnerable I was afraid to to what kind of emotions it would stir in my heart but God's response to my step of obedience was freedom and removing a weight from my shoulders this so much that happens when we dare to respond to God. This past Sunday, I dared to respond when God said to me, I felt He stirred in my heart that I must preach a message on obedience. And I only had three and a half days to prepare before the recording, something that would normally stress me out completely. But God's response was supernatural grace. We can only respond in obedience to God when we dare to overcome fear. We need to overcome fear. We need to face our fears in order to be obedient to God. So how do we overcome our fear? How do we respond in obedience to God? We need to focus on His unfailing commitment, His faithfulness, and His love to us because His perfect love casts out all fear. We also need to remind ourselves of all God's previous responses that came from our step of obedience, the way that He responded. We need to remind ourselves of that. And we also just need to put our courageous hat on and just do it. We need to put our destinies in God's hands. Psalm 16 verse 5 and 6, it, it, it's beautiful. It says, Lord, I leave my destiny and it's timing in your hands. Your pleasant path leads me to pleasant places. And I'm overwhelmed by the privileges that come with following you. There's privileges that comes when we follow God, when we are obedient to His voice. So practically, how do we respond in obedience to God? First of all, we need to respond to His Word. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And I remember many seasons in my life when God's word cut through my reasoning. For example, seasons when I wanted to give away a certain amount of money, but God wanted me to give more extravagantly. He wanted me to, to give over and above. And I would feel depressed at first until God's word cut through my depression. The scripture in, in Corinthians, it says, You sow sparingly will reap sparingly. But he so bountifully will reap bountifully. And I've learned that responding to God's word always leads to joy and peace. This lockdown is the perfect season to spend more time in God's word. And I want to encourage you to seek the Lord in, the, in this season. Seek Him earnestly with all of your heart. His word is a lamp to our feet. His word is a light to our path. He knows our future. Seek His face. Spend time with Him. I work through the New Testament with my 11-year-old in the mornings. And it is truly one of the highlights of my day. It takes quite a while to get through all the chapters. But we don't miss it because we both love it. We also need to respond to God's voice. So in 1 Kings 19, there's this beautiful scripture. It says, And behold, the Lord passed by in a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And listen to this one. And after the fire, still small voice. So do you know the still small voice of God? It's like a thought in our heads. But the more important question is, can you discern between your own thoughts and His voice? Because it just, it sounds just like your own thought. And the only way to discern is to act upon it when you feel it is God. The more you dare to respond in obedience to the still small voice of God, the easier it becomes to recognize Him speaking. I heard the still small voice of God when I felt that He wanted me to volunteer for class rep in 2017. And I'm so thankful that I responded because the relationships I know with the, with the parents would not have happened any other way. We also need to re respond to God's peace. Colossians 3.15 says, Let the peace of Christ, the inner calm of one who walks daily 
with him. Be the controlling factor in your hearts. Deciding and settling questions that arise is such a beautiful scripture. But obedience is sometimes just a sense, a feeling, a drawing to something, supported with an underlying peace from God. Supported with, with just this peace that does not make sense even, an overwhelming peace. When we had to make a decision about moving to East London in 2008, I did not have three angels bearing to me, neither did I hear an audible voice. But I had a desire to follow my husband and I had a desire to be obedient to God. And His peace filled my heart after days and weeks of seeking His face early in the morning, just crying out to God for direction. His peace guided us. Also, we respond to wise counsel. Proverbs 11 verse 14 says, Without good direction, people lose their way. But the more wise counsel you follow, the better your chances. So I wasn't planning to be obedient and bless the most challenging person in my life in 2019 until my husband gave me wise and stern counsel. In that moment, I needed wise counsel to respond in obedience to God. And my husband was that person who spoke into my life. So staying in community takes a bit more effort in this season of lockdown and social distancing. But in the counsel of many, there is wisdom. God often speaks through our brothers and our sisters in Christ. He speaks through, through fellow believers. So don't isolate yourself in this season. Make a deliberate effort to connect. Make a, make a deliberate effort to, to stay in community. You know, Zoom calls are not easy for me. It's not the same as having a conversation with someone in the same room. But every time I have a Zoom call with people, that I've, I've come a long road with. I feel refreshed. I feel blessed. I, I feel encouraged. And I believe there's special grace to connect in different ways than usual. So stay connected. There's a scripture in Isaiah 50 verse 10. It says, Who among you fears the Lord? And who obeys the voice of his servants? Who walks in darkness and has no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and rely upon his God. So I can understand that many of you might feel fearful at this stage. I mean, there's so much uncertainty for all of us. But let's face our fears head on and only fear God. Let's look to Jesus. If you don't know what is going to happen with your salary or your job or your business, or, or your future, you might feel like walking in darkness with no light, exactly as the scripture is saying. But Jesus is the light of the world. Let's put our trust in the name of the Lord. Let's rely upon our God who is faithful, who is good, who is for us, not against us. Do not be afraid to respond to His voice. He is good. He is faithful. He loves you. He is committed to you and your family. I would love to end with this quote from C.S. Lewis. Something really beautiful. You can't go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending. You can start walking in obedience from today. So have you been obedient to the last instruction that you have received from the Lord? If not, I want to ask you to be bold, to dare to respond to God's call. To be bold and to put your courageous hat on and just do it. There's a beautiful response from God when we dare to respond to His voice and to His word and to His peace and to wise counsel. What is that thing that you've put on the shelf, that thing that, that nobody even knows about, but you know it has not yet been done or you've started but you haven't finished. Maybe it's just reconciliation with a brother or a sister. Maybe it's a letter that you need to write, a letter of forgiveness. Maybe it is a project that, that you've started that you need to finish. Maybe it's studies. Maybe, maybe it's asking that one girl for coffee 
something that, that's on your heart. There's, there's this urgency or there's this sense and there's an underlying peace and you just know that God will help you and he will, he will, he will assist you and he will be there. But you haven't had either the time or the courage to respond. I want to dare you today to be daring and respond to God. Respond to His Word, respond to His, His voice, respond to His peace, respond to wise counsel, and you will be amazed at the results, you will be amazed at the outcome, and you will, you will have more courage next time to dare to respond to God. I would love to pray with you. Father, I thank you for the grace to respond to you in this season. I thank you for the grace and the courage to respond to your word and your voice, to your peace and to wise counsel. Lord, I ask that you remove fear. I ask that you reveal to us your beautiful response when we dare to respond to you. In the name of Jesus. Amen.